A big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. You've seen me conquer wild culinary challenges. You never get sick of this? No, 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 no. Oh my God. But let's talk about a different type of journey. Life's unpredictable twists and turns. I've had my shares of ups and downs in relationships. And while all of us have our own recipes for getting through life, sometimes you just need a professional to help get you through. That is why I'm a firm believer in therapy and why I'm so thrilled to have BetterHelp sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is on a mission to revolutionize therapy, making it affordable and accessible to everyone. And that's a big deal because finding a therapist can be quite the challenge, especially if you're limited to options nearby. Here's where BetterHelp comes in. They take away all the hassle. How you ask? It's all online. To dive in, simply answer a few questions and they'll pair you up with a licensed therapist who's a perfect match for you. Signing up and getting matched with a therapist is easy. Just hit the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash best ever food. Plus clicking that link not only supports this channel, it also helps you to save 10% on your first month at BetterHelp. If your therapist isn't a perfect match, no worries. With BetterHelp, switching to a new therapist is hassle-free. No extra cost and no stress from insurance. You can always benefit from talking to somebody and getting things off your chest. So what are you waiting for? Just go to betterhelp.com slash food and let's get you on a path to a better you. Now, on to the show. In this video, you'll witness an army of Hmong villagers turn a giant pig into five-star level food, all with ingredients found in nature. I've never seen anything like this. It's absolutely genius. This is like a technique I want to use back at home. <laughs> but wait. There's more to this story. Though they make up only 9% of the Laotian population, the Hmong influence on culture, traditions, and food is profound. These greens grow plentifully on the mountains. They are everywhere, and it's the best way to stretch this meal out. Brace yourself, because the menu here transcends the ordinary. Take a look at this. I don't know if that's done all the way through. Oh, it's medium rare. It's okay, bro. Is it okay, bro? Yeah, sure. Today, we're diving mouth first into this wild culinary landscape, taking on Hmong recipes that are both delicious oh. and daring. Are there bones in here as well? There's some bones in there, but it's all, you know, broken down. From pork parts cooked to perfection. I've been hearing about this way of grilling. There's so much little nuances in this. To giant rodents big enough to eat your rat terrier. These things can get up to this big. What the heck? That's a beaver. Today is a special day because for the first time, Hmong American chef Yia Vang is connecting with other Hmong people in the country his parents once called home. Chef, we have finally made it to a Hmong village. Yes. This is awesome. How does it feel? Residing among the mountains, a familiar terrain to most Laotian Hmong, you'll find Ban Lang Lao village. Feels great. All the housing, everything. It's exactly what my mom and dad described to me when I was a kid. As we arrive, Hmong villagers are already busied with preparations for today's upcoming feast, cooking pots set up, vegetables chopped, and rice cooked. From men to women, from the little ones to the elders, all are involved in this culinary endeavor, treating each other, Yia and myself, to the finest of Hmong cooking. To add to the feast, I've brought a little gift. We've had it shipped in from Luang Prabang. It's behind me right now. This is a domesticated, once wild boar. They do raise some pigs. They don't get this big. And they do try to snare pigs from the wild once in a while. But of course, those would be much thinner. This is not a thin pig. It's a city pig. You know, it's got that good life. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> in order to complete the task at hand, without incident, the village has recruited six men, each with their own role. They go to great lengths to collect the blood, whose precious calories will be allocated to another meal. And in this process, they believe that you have to get all that blood out before the animal completely dies because you don't want the meat to be tainted or ruined. If the blood isn't all out, they feel there's a belief that dead blood inside uh, will taint the meat. After blood collection, the villagers pour hot water over its body to ease hair removal. But to finish the job, They'll use fire. Now, my mom and dad, we do this in the States, but they just take a big old torch right to it. With this, they take a bunch of these bamboos and they made these twigs with these bamboos and they just put the fire right on. And while they're doing that, another team will come by right after and scrape all that access, all those little pieces of hair in there. I've never seen anything like this. It's absolutely genius. This is like a technique I want to use back at home. The boar is continuously charred and scraped until its skin, which will also be consumed, is smooth and clean. The organs are collected to make a Hmong dish we'll soon taste. Breaking the animal down will take time. Ye and I head to the jungle in search of less common protein options. 
Hmong villagers living in highland regions rely on hunting animals like wild boar and deer, or trapping small animals like birds, bamboo rats, or squirrels. And no one knows how to trap squirrels better than Mr. Tao. A squirrel might come down this tree, absolutely, cross a branch, and go up this tree. You know Hmong. Yeah. That's exactly what he said. It's a snare. Oh. You also have to be really strategic about having this guy right here, too. Right, so he's already posted this stick into the ground to act as a snare. That's going to create tension. So then you take out your wire cutters. Yep, that you harvested from the jungle. <laughs> right. This triangular steel structure, he binds it to the stick using a steel wire. That uh, steel triangle has a string on it. That he is tying to the stick right here. Uh, this is like the sound part. Oh, dude. Okay, I totally get what's happening here. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. That's how it works. And so usually when you find the squirrel, is it alive still or is it dead? Oh, it hangs around the neck and it's dead. <laughs> Do you think your father ever had to do something like this? Oh yeah, I've heard stories of it. Your father had to leave Laos and go to Thailand. Yeah, it was a long journey. He said we would walk for days and there were no roads. I can't even imagine traveling through here. There's no trails here, you know? At the age of 12, during the time of the Vietnam War, Yi's father was recruited to work alongside American troops in a 1961 to 1975 anti-communist CIA operation known Laos. as the Secret War. America's not-so-secret war in Asia. There are no American combat forces in Laos. When the Communist Party, Patet Lao, emerged triumphant, thousands of Hmong villagers were targeted and left with no choice but to flee the country they called home. Many traveled by foot for hundreds of miles through thick jungle, like that which surrounds us now. To catch food, did you have to do stuff like this? Absolutely. They would set up traps in rivers for catfish. They would set up traps like this to catch squirrels or small little lizards. More than that is they would eat the roots of trees. Many who fled did not survive. Yi's father made it to a refugee camp in Thailand. Going from Laos to getting to Thailand, do you know how long that took him? It took them a few months, but then he, he was one of the guys that kept going back to go get more people. Whoa. So we're able to set a trail that was like the safe trail, so he would go back to help other refugees who wanted to escape Laos. That's uh, remarkable. These days, some Hmong villagers still carry on the same as they did generations ago, hunting, harvesting, and trapping whatever they can find in these mountains. <laughs> The squirrel will be cooked two ways, but first, they must be singed over an open fire, rinsed with clean water, then sliced to remove the organs. Our first dish includes squirrel meat and squirrel bones, minced together by hand. All of this, including the bones, will soon become edible. Next, add lemongrass, spring onion, fresh chilies, pounded sticky rice powder, and coriander. Then, mix everything together. Wrap the mixture in banana leaves and secure it before steaming. Did you help cook these? Uh, yeah. Okay, is this the best one? <laughs> best one. Okay, thank you. Hosting us, Miss Sai Yang and her husband, Mr. Fei Long Li, both born and raised in this village. He said, welcome to the village. He's very happy and thankful to be hosting us here. Oh, same. This is quite a treat. I think very communal eating, right? We don't have any plates in front of us. Everyone gets a spoon and then you kind of just dig in. What about that? There's this a bowl is, of water. It's lukewarm and it helps kind of lubricate everything down. Oh, so we all share that water. We share the water too, yeah. Oh. It's like a mince. There's some bones in there, but it's all broken down. This reminds me of when I ate with the long neck Karen people in northern uh -huh. Thailand. They cook chicken. They chop every bone and put that in there as well. So you were eating bones, tendon, meat, fat, skin, everything. Well, absolutely. Think about it. Like all that flavor in that bone when it's cooked together. I mean, you're getting that true flavor of that squirrel. Yeah, and a lot of texture too. All right, let's try it out. Yep, you gotta work your way around the bowl. Texture. Mm -hmm. Something I really like about food is chewing it, because there's something satisfying about chewing all the way through it. You have to gently push your teeth down so you don't accidentally break your fillings. It's not a dish that you hurry up and eat. Mm. It actually slows you down. If you think about philosophically, monk food actually slows everything down, you know, because you're gonna have to really work it. Between all the bones, I can just suck out the flavor. Yeah, right? And that full depth of that squirrel, I mean, it tastes like northern Wisconsin squirrel to me, you know? <laughs> it does. I've never had squirrel in the USA. Oh, really? Yeah, don't do city squirrels, dude. They eat diapers and they taste like diapers. <laughs> As you go, you get a little water here. Do I just pick up the bowl? No, use your spoon, dude. Oh, jeez. Don't be that guy. <laughs> See? There you go. This is either great water or the worst soup ever. This broth is a little bland. It helps neutralize everything. I see. Our second squirrel breakfast has a new and unique ingredient combination I've never seen before. 
First, the meat is grilled over an open fire. In a pot, they boil lemongrass, then the meat, then toasted onion, toasted chilies, toasted spicy wood, and toasted sticky rice. Add eggplant, banana flour, and some local herbs found in the jungle. The result? A tantalizing squirrel stew. I got a whole leg right here. Oh, smoky. You can still smell when they singe the hair yep. off. Mmm, it's fatty. The meat overall is tender. It's sweet. It is like dark meat. Really delicious, deep flavor. Wow. That's good. I mean, and I think that all trip here, we've been talking about that bitter taste. You can feel a little bit of that, and it gives it a little depth. What if I wanted to put some rice and some broth? Can I do that? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> That's like my childhood growing up here right there. Mm -hmm. He's very grateful that you love this and it's delicious to you. He's saying as Hmong people, sometimes we just know what we know out here. Mm. And even if some people think it's not good or it's good, it's good to us. And he's very excited that this is delicious to you. I want to ask you a little bit more about the village here. About how many families are in this village? 47 family units. The land where your house is, do you own that? How does that work? Oh, okay. Officially, it belongs to Laos. But they are the caretaker. So everybody who lives on the mountain, it's part of what you do, it's part of yours. Yeah. But officially- They can't sell it to a mining company or something. Absolutely. Right. But if a mining company decides to come in, they're kind of crap out of luck. Exactly. And that's kind of the poopy part of this. That is very poopy. What do most of the people here do for money? They harvest the rubber trees and then livestock. What is the biggest challenge just day to day for people here? Just because the terrain's so rough and there's no vehicles, you just have to walk up and down and it's tiresome. What about for you? It's the everyday carrying of water. It has to be timed out. Where does the water come from? They have a spring, but we're able to pipe it through this area right down here. Mm -hmm. And so everybody in the village, they all come here. And that's a little easier, but still it's difficult. So imagine living on the other side and you have to wait your turn to come in and get the water. As preparations for our village feast continue, the men break down the meat for a multitude of dishes. Every part of the animal will be used. The meat, fat, skin, and bones too. Some protein portions will be allocated for barbecue, while the fat is reserved for a special soup. Before we sink our teeth in, Yia must undergo a countryside Hmong initiation. Our squirrel feast is complete, and now we're moving on to our next rodent, the bamboo rat. Bamboo? I love bamboo. I eat yeah. bamboo all the time. Rat? Never had anything called a rat before. Yeah, they eat bamboo too. Yeah, yeah. You already have so much in common. Yeah. <laughs> These bucktooth, stout, beady-eyed furballs are known to burrow underground near bamboo trees. This is a, a bit more modern trap. It has a door. Oh, we don't even know you can leave right now. They go in for the bait. As soon as they grab it, Wow. What holds it is those little springs. It's a very basic trap. What's remarkable is these guys are actually pretty young. If it was a typical like rice field rat, you'd be like, oh, good size. No, these things can get up to this big. What the heck? That's a beaver. Look Ooh. at those teeth. Ooh. Looks like my grandpa's teeth. Uh, he smoked so many that. cigarettes. In a place like this, they're also a treasured delicacy. After slaughtering, the bamboo rats are singed to remove their fur. Once it's cleaned from the inside, it's seasoned with MSG, salt, garlic, pepper, chili, coriander, and lemongrass. Grill over indirect heat until it smells like fully cooked rat meat. So we have right here the bamboo rat. It looks a lot different from when we saw it earlier. They look like a singing trio. Look at them. Oh, hi, guys. La, 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 la. This is the great one. La, la. So there's some little ones and there's the big one that's been quartered. Even the quarters are bigger than those little ones. Take a look at this. I don't know if that's done all the way through. Oh, uh, medium rare. It's okay, bro. Is mm, it okay, bro? Yeah, sure. I'm going to build up to that big one. Yeah. It looks fantastic. It also looks like it's medium rare. This one looks like it's cooked all the way through. Immediately, I can see there are some organs left over. Mm. Oh, it's great. It is pretty good. It just tastes like a liver. You can tell they've coated it in delicious seasonings. Yep. I'm going to do a little bamboo rat belly. Yeah, let's go for Here it. That's actually really nice. Rats have a certain sweetness to them. Mm, I'm gonna remember that. When I see one of those New York rats, I'm like, oh, you probably have a certain sweetness to you. <laughs> I mean, I can't say enough about the smokiness of this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. Great seasonings, mm -hmm. crisp skin, juicy, sweet, dark meat. Again, I think the word rat is what like deterred me. Mm. And also, here's the thing. You are what you eat, right? So if this thing just eats bamboo all the time, of course you'll get that kind of that sweetness from the bamboo. Oh, you know? I see. If that's the case, what would you taste like? Broken dreams, regret. Mm. <laughs> Earlier in the forest, you were talking about your father and his story, but your mom and dad both met in Thailand at a refugee camp. So she had her own journey out of Laos. Yeah, she had to escape Laos with her family. She had a husband, three kids, and she was still pretty young. And what happened was in that escape, her husband 
was killed. They were all captured and put into an internment camp, and they were there for almost a year. In Laos? In Laos, yep. And then, secretly, there were other Hmong men that came to that camp and helped them escape that camp. She said that they were so hungry that at one point all they were doing was digging for roots from trees and they were eating that and they had to be in complete silence and complete darkness. 29 refugee camps were built by the Thai government. Camp Ban Venai became a temporary home for a large Hmong population. Yi's parents, both ripped from their previous lives, crossed paths here and began a new journey together. As a result, Yia was born in that same refugee camp in 1984. When I see someone like my mom and she tells me things like, hey honey, I know things are tough, but this too shall pass. I know where her perspective is coming from. I didn't realize this until I was older because my mom and dad are both quiet people. They're not the life of the party type. And they're, I tell people, man, like, they're kind of like my North Star, you know? Like, I always feel like they're like this lighthouse and I'm in this ocean and I'm lost and confused and I can look back to that lighthouse. Being up here in these mountains, it's like coming to a home that I've never been to, but I feel like I belong, you know, so. Right here we have one of our designated cooking locations. The pot is on here and inside the pot, a load of pork fat. The soup is made by boiling chunks of boar fat along with local Hmong mustard greens. These greens grow plentifully on the mountains. They are everywhere and it's the best way to stretch this meal out. While the soup is simmering, another dish is underway, boar sausage. It starts with a finely chopped medley of aromatics. Coriander, garlic, chili, and onion are all mixed with the minced meat. Now, a miracle happens. We're gonna be stuffing the sausage right now. What they did was they cut this bamboo as a starter here, and then you just start stuffing. Like shoving toothpaste back in the tube, the meat blend makes its way into this natural intestinal casing, boiled briefly, then put on the grill to finish off. The larger remaining chunks of pork are boiled, rubbed down with salt, stuffed with a bamboo stick, then grilled over fire. What I really like about this is it's low and slow. You see how far it is out from the ember? The meat is portioned out for the attending villagers, each serving prepared with a singular purpose in mind, to create a communal experience. This food looks incredible. Gentlemen, can you tell the difference in taste between the pink pig and the wild boar? Yes, the boar will taste different. The transformation this has undergone, now it just looks like a typical beautiful sausage that you would find at a store, at a restaurant. Mmm. Mm. Oh, man. That, the snap of that intestine, the skin mm. as you bite through it, and then the mince of the meat is such a unique texture. It's all done by hand with knives. Exactly. There's no grinding. Mmm. That's addictive. I love that people just take water with their spoon. Yeah, dude. Why not cups? There's no cups around here, dude. Very loud. He was saying that the elder can't produce as much saliva, so between every bite, you get a bowl of water to help wow. lubricate everything down. But yeah, that's a good point. I got to lube up. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Here we have the barbecue. It looks gorgeous. It's like a giant thick piece of fat, a little bit of protein, some skin on there. Mm. The taste is so clean. And just to know that this boar was coming up this morning, you know? Mm -hmm. As fresh as it gets. Right here we have some ribs. That's what I for. What are the proteins that you're eating most often in this village? Chicken, sometimes special beef, like buffalo or beef. Fish? In this village, there's no river. Every time they do get fish, it's from the market only. Earlier today, we were talking about challenges the Hmong people in this village face today, but I want to talk about challenges people have faced over the last couple of generations. For you, when you think about your dad or your grandpa, what kind of challenges have they faced as a Hmong person growing up here in Laos? There's a lot of difficulty, but keeping a positive mindset mindset. He thinks of his grandfather where his generation was just to find a place to settle. Mm. They were constantly moving and every time you move you had to uproot your family, redo your garden or your farm all over again. You couldn't have a home. For his and his generation they had education compared to where his grandfather was. There are so many brighter better things to look forward to. It's a very similar story that echoes from the Hmong people of Vietnam, being pushed into lands unknown, being in new soil, new elevations, new geography, and having to reinvent your way of life. Here we have what my producer has referred to as fat soup. Yep. But what would you call this in Hmong language? Literally, it's just mustard green with pork. So for the sausage, for the barbecue, we use a lot of the leaner meat. And you can't just throw that fat away. That fat then becomes a part of the stew. And it's so rich. Oh, mmm, dude. 
It tastes delicious, but much more mild flavors than everything else, right? Yes. Hmong mustard green is like a mix between arugula and spinach. So I've got a big fatty piece right here. Mmm. There's still, there's still hair on there, isn't there? Texture. There's texture. Bro, we eat a full bag. Are you going to complain about that little hair? I'm not complaining. I'm just noticing. That is different, right? It's very rich, but it's broken down a little bit, so it's a bit soft. It's nice, but really, you got to mix it equally with the greens to get that true balance. How's that? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm. For you, I know you've had your own difficult history when you were younger as part of the war. Could you talk about your part that took place in the war here in Laos? She started out as an orphan, no parents. Him and his brother, they were working on the tobacco field and the bombings happened. You see all the burns? Oh. That's from the bombing. So he felt like he had nothing to live for because of his disformity from the injury. He was so angry that it didn't matter to him, that he just wanted to join something and didn't matter if he died. 20 years he fought. Wow. After that, he settled, got married. During the war, the Hmong people were divided between two sides. One side fought with the American CIA, while the other fought for communist Laos. Mr. Yachong Tor was among those who fought against the USA. The people you were fighting against back then, do you still hold animosity against them? He said that war is war, and in that time there was two sides, but now times have changed and it's unified as one. He sees it as friends now. We all know from that time period, there really were no winners. Absolutely, and I don't think that there was no good guy or bad guy. Propaganda. Yes, absolutely. It's interesting, both our parents were affected in some way. Even my father was drafted to join the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't do it. He went to boot camp. He essentially kind of faked an injury. You know, I wouldn't tell this story if he was alive, but he, he passed recently, and to me, I think he shouldn't be ashamed. Yeah. I think he knew in his heart it wasn't a place where the U.S. should have been in the first place. And it was kind of his moral duty, his moral obligation to do the right thing and to abstain from fighting. And that's what he did. And eventually they shipped him back home and they said, you're useless, get out of here. <laughs> this has been a deeply fascinating educational day. It's been a pleasure to share food with you and sit across from you. So thank you so much. <laughs> we are friends. We'll meet together. We'll be together. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to Beffers.shop today. Uh, well, I was gonna speak to your mom. <laughs> oh, hey. There's a kid Hold another kid. All these houses are really close to each other. It feels like there's no such thing really as personal space. If you're cooking a pig or chicken or something that smells really good, do all the neighbors just kind of wander in and see what you're up to? People only come out when it's like kind of a feast like this. But if you're just kind of like personally cooking lunch and dinner in your house, everyone kind of sticks to their own. I would be the worst neighbor. What's up? What's going on over here? Is that a new twist? Is that a grill? cheese one reason maybe because it's a uh, <laughs> let's try some liver oh liver bamboo rat liver let's see if it tastes like bamboo hmm why'd you spit that out oh i was waiting for you bro uh -oh. the good part is once it's trapped it still has the food i mean think of a trap where you get trapped and then also the food goes away it's horrible horrible you know i want to transition how to, do i to a woman to, to a female no to i want to transition to <laughs> Boom, guys, that is the end of video four. I thought you was going to stay here, actually. I thought you were planning to move in. I uh, thought about it. Got uh, some ideas for vacation homes here. Mm. I want to say a huge thank you to Yeah for joining me. This has been a very fun, unique, and interesting series, being able to take him throughout Laos and experience this country through his eyes. Thank you so much for having me. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. There's another episode. But in the meantime, go to his Instagram. It's right here. That is the name. Follow his fun culinary adventures and his media exploits as well. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time a peace all right let's walk okay. this way Ooh. just like we're going into the sunset you know, know. Like the sun's over there. sunset the well, sun's over right there oh shit.